Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 88. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for chapter 9, click on the link directly below the video and scroll all the way down to the Excel Finance class section. Hey, we're talking about net present value and estimating cash flows. In this video, we'll get to see the tax shield method again for estimating operating cash flows. But more importantly, we'll see scenario analysis. And all this means is we're, we're creating all these estimates, right? So it might be a good idea to go on the low side, the pessimistic side, and we could pick whatever spread we want, but we're going to say 10% here. So we'll do our base case for cash flows and net present value. We'll stretch the numbers 10% down and then 10% up. And this will give us a range of net present values we can look at, which gives us more information. So if we want to spread the numbers, uh, because it's all estimations, this process will work. We'll also get to see Excel's Scenario Manager. Now here's our situation. We have a cost for a new asset of 1 million, 1.2 million for five years. Straight line depreciation down to zero. We'll calculate our depreciation expense. Here's our unit sales price, variable cost, and fisc cost, our base case. And then we'll go down by 10% and up by 10% optimistic, pessimistic, our tax rate, our required rate of return, and our net working capital. All right, let's first calculate our depreciation. Simply uh, straight line. Again, Makers is the one to really use. Um, but we're using this for a simplified example here so we could see how scenario analysis works. All right, so we're going to have that depreciation expense. We have our units, price, et cetera. Now we could go ahead and create a um, pro forma income statement and then calculate our cash flows, which I did do down here. But uh, you know, if you're doing this over and over and over, at some point uh, you can make f you know single formulas in a single cell to estimate everything. So that's what we're going to do here, and we're going to use the tax shield method. Remember, the tax shield method means says take all the revenues and subtract all the costs except for non-cash depreciation. Figure out what the tax is based on that, and then add the tax shield from our non-cash depreciation expense. So right here, I have to calculate, um, in essence, our uh, revenues, variable costs, and fixed costs. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right in the cell here. First off, I'm going to notice that price and variable cost, the difference between these will actually give me the gross profit. So I'm going to say that price minus this variable cost. These are per unit. So if I enter this in parentheses, I can see 14 bucks. That's the profit from each cell, not considering fixed cost. So I can get my um, total gross profit units times that spread there. Right? But that's not right because I still need to subtract fixed costs. So from that, I can subtract fixed costs. Now, all this is going to give us, it's going to give us revenue minus all of the uh, costs except for non-cash depreciation. Well, we know that has to be multiplied by our 1 minus the tax rate. So I'm going to put in parentheses around here. 1 minus our tax rate. All right? So that is, if we don't include depreciation, that's going to be our after-tax profit. But now we have a benefit of um, depreciation. So that's where the name of this method comes from, tax shield method. We have uh, our shield, which is our depreciation shielding us from paying taxes. So that times our tax rate. And that gives us the extra benefit from that non-depreciation expense on the tax return. So there it is, our operating cash flow. All right, if you do it one step at a time, um, you can uh, figure out how to do that. And you can see over here, those were our, our right there, if we did it the long way. All right, now. We're going to do net present value, and get this. Usually, we need a bunch of values, right, like this. But no, we're going to see that the net present value, we can actually create all these values right in our formula. So I'm going to say equals, let me scroll up here. And I'm going to do the non-cash uh, um, 
or uh, let's do net present value and the rate there's our required rate comma now every example we've done in this class so far we just highlight a bunch of values right but we're not going to do that here we're going to use the uh, option that we can put in individual values separated by commas. Now you have to be careful here. We do have we've estimated that cash flows are going to be assuming they're the same for each period. So we can just go value one. But we have to think: is there anything else at uh, time one? No, there's not. So we go uh, comma value two. That one value three value four. We're up to four. Remember, there's a total of five. So comma and the fifth one. But there's something that happens at the end of the project. We get our networking capital back, so we're going to have to add it. So we, in essence, created our cash flows right within, whoops, that one right there. We created our cash flows right within our net present value. Now we close parentheses and we just have to subtract times zero cash flow. So minus our initial cost and our initial investment in net working capital. And there you go, all in one formula. Pretty convenient to know how to do that if you're doing a lot of calculations instead of you know using that much spreadsheet real estate. Now, so we've we've done our base case here. Uh, now we need to estimate, um, change some variables, and then actually we'll be able to copy these formulas over here without recreating them. But the first thing is we got to talk about when you're going down to the pessimistic side, units and price. Well, if you're going to be pessimistic, then you want to say, oh, I'm probably going to sell less. If you want to be pessimistic, you're going to say, oh, I probably can't sell it for that much. So for both of these numbers, we're going to take these numbers and multiply them by 1 minus our 10%. That's for both units and our price. So our price will be, oh, I'm going to lock this right there, that one right there. So I'm going to hit the F4 key, Control Enter, copy it down. All right, and that one worked. Now, what about costs. Okay, so our costs in the base case are 29, but if we're going to be pessimistic, what are we going to do? We're going to assume that they're more, right? So for both of these costs, we're going to say times 1 plus 10%. We're going to assume that they go up. So there's, on the downside, you have to do something different to the units and price than to the costs. So now we, we went up. We've assumed it's gone up, and also we're going to assume, I did it again, uh, um, the B3 just hit F4. I copy it down, and so now I got it right. The 10% times that right there. You can't see it because that's a blue uh, box there. All right, now let's do the um, the optimistic. All right, so we have units and price. Well, if you're going to be optimistic, you're saying, oh, I'm going to increase my units. Oh, I'm going to get to increase the price. So for both of these, we're going to say that times 1 plus, right? So now you see, well, let's enter this. I'm going to hit not forget, lock that. So on the op optimistic side, we're adding 10% for units and price. On the downside, we're subtracting. All right, um, let's go ahead and do our costs. Well, what, what's the optimistic? Well, if it's 29 here, if you're super optimistic, then we'll pay less, right? And again, this is just a way of spreading the numbers so you're not just stuck with your estimations. You're going to you know, have some, some uh, wiggle room on the low side and the upside, right? This probably, do, I mean, this doesn't really uh, you know, happen perfectly like this in the real world. But as an estimation technique, it's pretty good. All right, variable costs, I'm going to say that times and 1. And we're optimistic, so we're going to subtract 10%. That means our cost should be lower. And now I'm going to hit the F4. And same with our fixed costs. All right, now. I'm going to copy this. Notice these are all relative cell reference, so I'm going to control C, control V for paste, control V for paste. And then I'm going to come down here, control 
They're all relative cell references, right? So when we copy and paste over here, it'll be looking at the same relative um, cells up here. So I'm going to copy two cells. So I click on the top one, Control V. I click on, click on the top one, Control V. And there we have done our scenario analysis. Pessimistic, ooh, look at that. Uh, so we've got big fat negatives for operating cash flow and net present value. Uh, positives here, but um, so we go, so we have the base and then on the upside, you know, we have 2 million net present value. Down here we have minus 1.6 million. All right, so that's how to spread the numbers. Let's go over and we'll see a slightly different way uh, to do this using an Excel feature called Excel uh, Scenario Manager. Here's our numbers, right? And what we're going to do is we're going to memorize these. And then we're going to type these numbers in here and memorize a second set. And then we're going to type these numbers in here and memorize a, a third set. What scenario scenarios do is that they can memorize a certain number of cells. And then you just go to a drop down and you uh, click on it and say which set you want. So you go up to data and what if analysis. And then up here, scenario manager. And you click add. We've already highlighted the cell, so it's got it there. And I'm going to say base. Click OK. Click OK. There it is. Now I'm going to. Um, close this and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to actually copy. These are going to be called pessimistic. I'm going to copy this and instead of pasting I'm going to right click paste special and I'm going to say paste values only. It'll paste just the values. It'll keep all that formatting. All right now I'm going to highlight this. Actually I don't think you need to. You just go back up to data what if scenario. Now you say add and we're going to name this And then click OK, click OK. So now we have two of them, and we can show any one we want. It's a way of memorizing formula inputs. And finally, copy, right click, paste special, and I want values. I'm going to highlight this. Actually, I'm going to try to go over here and see what if analysis scenario manager add. And look at that, it remembers, right? And so I'm going to call this one, it's just saying whatever's there right now, I'm going to memorize it. I'm going to call this optimistic. Click OK, click OK. And now you can come up to Scenario Manor Manager and show the base, show the pessimistic, show the optimistic, and it all changed. So it memorizes formula inputs. Still further, you can right click the Quat. Sometimes you see the quat up in the top, so you can yours may be above up here. But I'm going to say uh, customize quick access toolbar, and I'm going to go. It's right here, and I'm going to come over here to all. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to click in here and type S to get to the S's, and I need to find scenario. Went too far. Not scenario manager. Scenario. Click Add, it adds a button over here. Click OK. Now mine doesn't have a little icon picture, but now you can just go here. And there it is. Is that totally cool? So you can just switch back and forth. All right, uh, scenario analysis for net present value calculations and for the cash flow, operating cash flow. Uh, we'll see you next video.